Hi all, hope all are you doing good, good morning, good afternoon or good evening based on wherever you are. Um, in today's video I want to talk about how do you create a docker container where you don't connect it to a demo database but you actually connect to an actual database and that database is placed on your local machine which is your current machine, host machine. If you think this is important and this will make your life easier, I would say thank to Stephen because he had this idea that I should talk about it and that's why I'm recording it. So thanks Stephen for that idea. Let's understand why we need that scenario to start with. Uh, if you get a customer database or a database where you are doing your setups, you always want to have that on, on your local machine, on your local server so that it's easy to take backup and you know and restore and, and things like that so would would nav container helper freddy have given us so many possibilities to manage all this to connect to a uh, sql database which is on my host machine and in this video we'll talk about it how we do it so let's see uh, what you're trying to connect uh, i have a database which i have being called as customer database for business central 16 and uh, it has some tables it has three companies with different names we'll see what these are what those are but to start with the first thing that you need to remember that your sql server should have a mixed mode authentication enabled and you should have a you know a account which is sys admin on that sql server or at least db owner on that database I'm not exactly sure about the permission, but my account is set as sysadmin, which is my SA account. So let's see before we begin uh, what companies are in there. So what I've done is I actually use Visual Studio for all my things now, Visual Studio Code. So I'll pop up my Visual Studio Code and then I have an extension for SQL Server where I already have my local host mapped. So let's connect it and let's see what tables have the, as in what companies are there in this database. So when I do a new query, I can use my same SQL commands, which is customer database. And I can say select start from companies. So once I have written that, let's execute these commands. And let's see what companies I have in this database. Just put it down. And as you can see, the company names in this are company, customer company one, two, and three. So we'll see once it gets connected what company names we get and when we build our Docker container. So let's start our Windows PowerShell. Run it as administrator. And make sure as we do all the time that your docker is running so which is running so that's good we've already gone through how do you install nav container helper uh, what execution policies you need to set so if you don't know or if you're seeing this video as the first video i'll request you to go back and understand all those parameters so i'll directly start with the uh, new nav container and let's see what all parameter we need to set so our container name will be same as we always give so I'll, I'll give it demo 2 this time we'll accept the license then I need to assign premium plan for my user authentication I use nav username password and then coming down we'll set the database credential now database credential are the username and password that you use to connect to your SQL server and that's a new parameter that we haven't used in any previous video and we'll need it for this one uh, then we need the database name so let's copy it paste the oh, sorry not instance database name let's see about the instance so if you have an instance while connecting to the SQL server if you have something like this SQL 2017 or uh, SQL Express then you'll also have to add this 
into this field which is database instance if everything is on the default instance then you don't need to specify this now next is database server the thing that will come to your mind that I need to give the actual server name or the local host as this there but uh, I, I was reading Freddy's blog where he updated that in nav container helper 4.16 and higher uh, the update host parameter that we set on the top or we'll will will set at the end will do one more thing which will that on every restart of a container or reboot of the computer it will also add an entry in the host file inside the container an entry pointing to the docker virtual network gateway with the name host dot container helper dot internal now what it means it means that now you can use host dot container helper dot internal as a database server inside uh, inside a container in order to connect to the SQL server on the host so if you want to read more about it I'll put link into the description window but this is the article which talks about it from Freddy using SQL Server on host so I'll make sure that I add the link of this article into the description section but let's go forward and let's set as Freddy said which is we'll set the database server as host which is this machine dot container helper dot internal then what else I need um, I need to come down I don't want to do the health check because this is just for the demo if you want don't uh, un don't check this I want to create the docker container early so I'm not exporting object text text but if you need you can use that and then the next thing that we are going to do is uh, set up the image name now I don't remember the image name so I'll use docker images and show me the images that I have so I'll use the repo name first put a colon and then copy the tag which will complete my image name parameter so once my image name parameter is set then next thing that I want is install certificate on the host and then my developer license if you don't have developer license that's okay the the container creation process will add a demo license into it um, then the memory limit as I said earlier it's minimum 3 GB and then coming down here I just need to set my use SSL and I need shortcuts on desktop and then as we were reading from Freddy's blog we'll set the update host true so let's copy this and quickly see what all parameters we are using so using the container name which is important to give a unique name to your container remember if demo to container exists it will be overwritten so make sure that you don't have demo to container in your machine except EULA we are accepting the license adding our user as premium as premium plan using authentication app nav username password using database credentials we'll see what happens when you run it setting up the database name setting up the database server which is host.containerhelper.internal and I just said do not check health if you want you don't need to use that parameter if you need to export objects then don't use this then the image name then install certificate on host the license file path memory shortcut when you want to place them update the host file and use SSL so these are the parameters that we are using let's run this command and let's see what happens so when I run this command the first prompt that comes to me is actually asking me credential for my SQL server 
so remember this use your password that you use to log into your SQL server click OK and now it's asking me credential that I need that talk that I'll require to log in into the container or into the modern client so use your password as strong and there is a password policy that applies to nav username password there is a specific video which talks about those policies you can watch that let's click OK and give it some time and it'll start the creation process which I think it's already started so as you can see uh, it started the process where it checked what's the server version of docker what's the client version is there anything related to demo 2 on my machine it's it got deleted and because it's running fast I'll have to increase the size then once demo 2 was removed it used set the parameter of image name disable the health check creating the container gives you details and then set the locale checks for hyper vi isolation copy some file into your container then create start creation of your container using that image waiting for container to be ready which is done now it's already set my uh, SQL server name which is host.docker.internal then it sets the gateway and in the host file as Freddy's blog said it updates that it starts the container telling you the host name public DNS name details of authentication starting IIS in Porting the encryption key that's the key that's required to use SQL authentication on your service here creating the self sign certificate that's created now updating the service tier so let's wait for a while and should be able to start the service here so as you can as you can see it already completed those steps imported the encryption key started the service tier then use the license which I added inside the docker place it import the license gave me the details of my server and gave me the files and it took some time but it's ready so now let's see what it created and as we did last time we'll again save these details so that it's easy and I don't have to struggle to find these details about my container so I'll copy them and I'll put them on a notepad and I'll save it and say demo to uh, container details okay so let's see on desktop where are my shortcuts okay okay so we get a demo to web client Let's click on it and it will load my web client I'll use my login details and it should log in now to my environment so if you remember our company name should be customer company one two and three so let's see what happens once we log in into this So as you can see the container is up and I see the company name as customer company 2 and let's also see what other companies are called if I go to my settings and try to choose my company I'll see that my company names are 1 2 3 okay but not just this let's create a record and then see what happens is it get updated on my local SQL so let's add a vendor just to make it easy let's create new let's click OK and name it as test vendor from container OK and this is the number so let's now go back to SQL and see is this 
uh, when did I actually get added into my local SQL database so you can either use SQL but I prefer using PowerShell uh, sorry VS code so it's up to you what you want to use and then I'll see customer company 2 2 dollar vendor okay okay where my number oh sorry don't say it where my number is equals to this so let's execute this and see what I, what comes out so if you see now this vendor I can see on my local SQL so now anything that I'm doing on my docker environment in my docker container is actually getting reflected on my local SQL which is actually hosted on my machine so hope that makes sense and let me know your views and comments uh, on this article if you have a thought or an idea that you want me to record about do what Stephen da did you know put it as a comment or send me an email and I'll, I'll try to make it available as soon as possible so thank you for your time see you next time